disturbing evidence of what has happened to our country at the hands of arguably our greatest adversary. And what's worse, the evidence we've heard so far all seems, all seems to lead to the conclusion that they had help from the inside, that this was in part an inside job from U.S. persons, willing American accomplishments, accomplices, or terribly naive ones, or probably both, who helped the Russians attack our country and our democracy. We're both still at the early stages of our investigation. We're not indicting anyone. We're merely laying out some of the evidence and the facts, dirty though they be, sleazy though they be. And no matter what, we can safely conclude at this point that never in the modern era has a president and his administration had so many foreign entanglements, entanglements that continue to push American foreign policy away from its core roots, beliefs, interests, and alliances towards unprecedented positions that only Putin himself could approve of. How else can we explain the modification to the Republican Party platform in such a decidedly pro-Russian way? Republicans who are always so strong against geopolitical foes like Russia. I know my colleagues on this committee take the Russia threat very seriously. Why wouldn't the people who inhabit the White House? How else can we explain an administration that beats up our oldest allies, like Australia and Britain, and our strongest and most sacrosanct alliance, like NATO, but never, ever say a bad word about Putin? In fact, they say a lot of good words about Putin. An administration that we have heard decisively makes up baseless wiretapping charges against a former United States president, equates our intelligence agencies to Nazi Germany, and argues moral equivalence between a repressive authoritarian states with an abhorrent human rights record like Russia and our free and open democracy. And yet, this administration never, ever utters any criticism of Russia. Let's be clear, though. This is not about party. It's not about relitigating the election. It's not as if anything we do here will put a president from a different political party in the Oval Office. So I hope that it's clear that it's about something much more important. And no, it's not about political motivation, to my friend who said and suggested that earlier. This is about patriotism, about something way more important than party. This is about country and the very heart of what this country is built on which is open, free, fair, trusted elections. We don't take our investigation lightly, and I know you don't. Indeed, you go through a process to even decide to do that, whether to expend the resources, to begin with credible allegations and reason to believe that there is something that warrants it. And I no doubt believe that you have talked to lawyers in and out of the prosecution prosecution divisions about whether or not this warrants an investigation. I know you don't take this lightly. But what we have seen is damning evidence today of what Russia did. We've also seen damning evidence of how they did it. Russia has a history of using active measures, many of which we have heard about today. Let's recap them. We're getting near the end. Hacking and dumping information to damage or embarrass their enemies. We heard about this, of course, with respect to WikiLeaks and Guccifer 2.0. Using third parties and cutouts, business people, oligarchs, and other ostensibly private individuals to cultivate relationships. We've discussed Ambassador Sergei Kislyak, Rosneft CEO Igor Sechin, and of course, Vladimir Putin himself. We've also heard about Russia's use of companies like Gazprom, the Bank of Cyprus, Rosneft, Rosneft and a confusing web of offshore shell companies used, it would seem, to hide or to launder money. We've also heard how Russia released disinformation to spread rumors and confuse the public and sow distrust in the ability to even know truth objectively using propaganda media outlets, whether directly owned by Russia or not, to release such disinformation in order to claim plausible deniability of Russia's hands. Here again, we see WikiLeaks 
and Guccifer 2.0, but we also see the use of propaganda outlets like RT. And, of course, the use of U.S. persons of influence, whether through active collusion or coordination or naive acquiescence, we don't yet know the full extent to further Russia's attempts to undermine our elections and ultimately weaken our democracy. On that last point, we've heard about quite a few individuals in the Trump orbit who fell somewhere on that spectrum from mere naivete, disturbing enough if this naivete is a feature of those who are supposed to be running our country in foreign policy, 